what were your main takeaways from from that uh, fight against Mohamed Mokaev? Honestly, I was the most pushed up I've ever been in my life. Okay. It, it's, uh, you know, there's so many things. You, know, you, you go back in time and you wish you could do things better. better and that's obviously always going to be the case after taking a loss. I think, yeah, for sure, there's a lot of people that came up to me and said, yeah, like, they were real inspired by my performance. But me personally, that was just completely let down on my end. You know what I mean? I, I, I have all the tools in the world to beat that kid. And, you know, nine times out of ten, I could probably do it. So... You know, but, you know, it, it, it's just a learning curve and, and um, you know, it, it is what it is. I was, you know, like the thing is, he's such a high level wrestler, too, and outspoken for all of his accolades and that respect. And to still be able to slam on his head was probably the biggest highlight of that whole thing. But aside from that, being held down by him, just holy smokes, absolutely unacceptable on my part. Yeah, I guess the pissed off part is that you felt like you were close to finishing him, right? Is, is that is that more of like how you felt or just like what like what what the what what annoyed you the most was that you feel like you you had the tools to beat him, I guess. Yeah, you know, up until that point, I had actually been going for the last two fights with a broken hand. So it's been difficult to uh, it, it was difficult to even finish a grip with my, my hand being broken. But now everything's nice and strong and I'm back to full strength. So you know, it's, it's, that's never going to slip out. You know, I had the hand underneath his choke, or, or sorry, I had the hand underneath his neck, and I was, I just couldn't squeeze for the choke because I was unable to grab my own hand because my arm was in so, my hand was in so much pain. But, um, you know, now I'm, I'm back healthy. I'm 100%, and there's absolutely no excuses moving forward. Did you speak to him after the fight at all? Because, again, there was a lot going into this, yeah, right? Like, yeah, I, I was did, just I curious. Did, yeah. You know what? And you know what the crazy part is? You know, it, it's so hard because like a lot of these guys, you know, you don't, you don't generally get the chance to, to re be able to reach out, but he was actually ended up being, and I just pains me because, you know, you see two different characters, but him in real life is a very nice guy. He's, he's an extremely nice kid. Um, you know, he was super respectful and he was like, yeah, I'll never do that again. I'm never picking on uh, somebody like of your accolades and, and your, your rank or not rank, but like your, your, um, you know, just experience level, right? Because he's still just a kid, right? And and I that's what I want to go in there and show is that you know, okay, yeah, for sure, he's he's done a fan, he's had a fantastic beginning to his career, but somebody on my part that has seen it all, um, that's what I want to go into that fight to show him that yo, you know, you're not gonna outclass me by any sense, right? There's not gonna be an outclassman, you know, somebody like myself that's been doing this for the last 15 years, pro. So, um. Yeah, but after talking to him, you know, he ended up being a really nice kid. He offered, you know, and he even offered to help out for this camp. Um, and obviously, you know, he's just he's a, he was a, he was a nice guy. You know what I mean? He and he's well taken care of for. He's well spoken for. And uh, yeah, I, I have nothing but respect for him to be honest. Well, that, that's good because obviously, you know, there was a lot going in there. Like for people who don't know, you you were a big underdog in that fight, and, and you made it competitive. Um, I, I know he did mention after the fight he wasn't a hundred percent. Um, did that yeah. bother you at all? Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just curious, like some of the stuff online because you sort of talked about him in person. What yeah, what about the yeah, online stuff? The, I was just that's the thing. He on, online he's a douchebag. Online he's he's kind of he plays that he plays that. But I I guess he's doing that kind of for viewership and for to hype and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. And if that's the only wants to play that he plays. In person, very nice guy. Can't see nothing, nothing bad about him. Online, a little bit of a different character. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know what? If you want to say that he wasn't 100%, that's fine, whatever. None of us are 100%, you know what I mean? I had absolutely mm -hmm. never spoken about my injuries and going into the cage, and I've never once blamed any of my performances on it. Um, and, and so that's the difference, right? I even, I would, you know, I take my losses on the chin and that's it. But I do want to say that choke was under his chin. It was behind, like I had it sunk in. And if I was able to even, I, at that point in time, I wasn't even able to touch my hand, right? So, mm -hmm. like, I, if I was able to even grab my hand and to pull my arm back behind his neck, he would have been finished in a heartbeat, right? Mm -hmm. But the chance, the thing was, I did not have my hand in 100% form. So, you know, that means, and that's the only time I'll ever complain about something like that because it's, it's just been so much hype and whichever. This kid was terrified about me on the ground, as he should be. Um, and he did, he played all the right and smart moves by just, like, sitting there holding me not doing shit not doing nothing not even trying mm -hmm. to punch me because he, he he knew the moment he gave me space and was, i was exactly what i was going to do and he was going to go to work take his back choke him out um so you know it, it's done it's behind me now and, and we move forward we got jake in front of us um he's a tough guy you know i'm expecting him to come out guns blazing heavy handed heavy leg uh moving forward and uh we're, we're going to do the same thing we always do with every one of the guys you know what i mean so we're going to go out there and just meet him in the middle and see who goes first 
And, uh, you know, just last thing, just because you sort of touched on it there. So are you guys good, like, after the fight? Because, like you said, he was nice to you after the fight, and then you oh, see yeah. this stuff online. Yeah, you, yeah. You, got, you guys are cool? Okay, yeah. Because he's, he's a nice kid, and I just want to mention one other thing. And I'm not, like, trying to pin him as the bad guy here at all. I just I have to talk about all this stuff because this is what came out of it. But do you feel like maybe there's some pressure for him to act a certain way online because he's been this hype prospect, because there's a lot of pressure? I'm 100%. sure there was fans – you know, telling him he sucked in that fight because he was supposed to run right through you. So do you feel like there's maybe some pressure in the fact that he's a younger guy that maybe yeah. he has to act like yeah. that a little bit? But you know what? And that's part of the gig. That's part of the gig. And if he's going to be, if he's going to fulfill this prophecy of being like the youngest champ in the world, he's going to have to go overcome all of that. Right. That's part of the mm -hmm. gig. That's what we signed up for. That's what he signed up for. That's the role he took. So, you know, that, that's it. That's all. That's basically it. You know, um, yeah. it, it was a pretty crazy fight week. They had security on both ends. They couldn't keep us in the same room. They couldn't keep us in the same building at all. You know what I mean? We were going to tear each other's heads apart. At, at one point, so, in time, so there was like bad team. blood going into the fight then. Yeah, well, I had a security guard on me with all times. He had one. On wow. Me okay. Times. And then I think at one point they 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 were kind of like, okay, let's see what these kids are really going to do because it was like weight cut day. They put us, you know, one his security guard. I asked him, oh, can I go in the sauna? And he's like, yeah, go in the sauna. And then I go in the sauna, and then all of a sudden, somebody's like, yo, he's in there, and I'm like. Oh, so why they tell me? And then the camera crews start rolling in. They try seeing the scene. There's gonna be a little bit of drama being brought in. You know, I'm man. I, I, I'm down to bang any time of day, right? I'll fight mm -hmm. at any time, and I'm not. I'm not scared of this kid, whether it's in the cage or it's on the street, whichever. So I, w I wasn't gonna be, you know, any pushover. You know what I mean? It's probably it's probably safer in the streets, to be honest, for him than it is in the cage. But you know, so at that point, it was like it is what it is. But yeah, for sure, they were definitely hyping this this to be some sort of, you know, and it wasn't on any on my part because, you know, me, I try to play the Canadian nice guy cool and, and I am generally a nice guy for the majority part, you know what I mean? But, you know, I, it, it, it was pretty crazy that, you know, that was brought out and, and you know, and honestly, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun.